One of the most important roles in aviation is that of weather forecasting. To ensure aircraft can safely land and depart from an airport, pilots rely on meteorologists, the people who observe, report and forecast the weather. The weather forecaster has a wide range of information at their fingertips, along with a good understanding of known weather phenomena. This all helps them forecast weather at an airport as accurately as possible. The main responsibilities of being an aviation forecaster is that you are trying to reduce risk and improve safety of uh, uh, pilots and plane in the sky and especially in specific for the weather aspects that are going to be a concern for them. So your responsibility is to communicate uh, any kind of uh, weather risk and weather impactful weather that might affect the customers and pilots and uh, uh, delivering that uh, in a confident manner but also at the same time trying to tell them what are you sure about and what you are maybe have a bit more uncertainty about. Because aircraft operate at all hours, aviation meteorologists will sometimes work nights, weekends and holidays, especially if there are urgent weather situations at hand. This often means early starts on flight days. The UK's Met Office was founded in 1854. It employs and trains weather forecasters who are then based in the UK and also overseas, including here at St Helena Airport. Predicting the weather from one hour to the next or even one day to the next will never be 100% accurate all of the time. But with experience and training, the forecaster can give pilots a pretty good idea of the flying conditions they are likely to encounter. Weather conditions and types that an aviation forecaster needs to know is what is relevant for the aeroplanes and uh, pilots and planes. So the elements that they're interested, the, a plane will be interested in is those that will affect their landing or taking off. Generally cloud base, uh, uh, visibility, wind speeds, those are the uh, aspects that they will be considering first. Other considerations about how gusty or how turbulent um, the area around and near the airport is can take consideration. Aircraft using an airport come in all types and sizes and each reacts differently to the changing weather conditions. Some aircraft will be more tolerant of crosswinds and tailwinds than others. Different aircraft will be fitted with different weather and navigational monitoring systems and the same goes for airports. Forecasters must be mindful of these factors when predicting the weather. Current weather readings are taken using equipment on the airfield, which are then transmitted to the forecaster and to air traffic control. At Santelina we have an instrument called the LIDAR. Uh, Santelina is a very peculiar airport, uh, but like uh, Hong Kong or other airports, it's got uh, some shear cliffs and uh, wind shear issues that affect the operations at the airport and especially landing. The LIDAR measures wind speed and direction, specifically along the runway heading. Sudden variation in colours on the instrument display represent rapid changes in wind direction, which indicates the presence of turbulence or wind shear. The LIDAR is therefore a vital forecasting tool at St Helena Airport. Other instruments at the airport include three anemometers measuring wind speed and direction at different points along the runway, along with three wind socks to give pilots a visual representation of wind direction and speed. St Helena has its own Met Office, which monitors weather from a station at Bottom Woods and from a series of remote monitoring sites across the island. The airport will make use of this data for its own reports. The forecaster also monitors different weather radar and satellites online and will access computer weather models to assist with making predictions. Another important part of forecast preparation is stepping outside for visual assessments of the weather. These are known as observations. Compared to TV weather reports, aviation forecasting is much more specific and detailed 
and tends to focus on conditions over a shorter time frame, typically from 1 to 48 hours. Aviation forecasting is designed to consider environmental conditions that may affect the safety of flights. Over time, observations and readings are constantly being added to a growing electronic database of weather information. This allows computer models to predict future weather patterns. As the database of information grows, the accuracy of predictions will improve. However, predicting the weather is not an exact science. Weather forecasters will monitor and analyse the full range of information available but will also draw on their own experience to help improve the certainty of forecasts. Once weather information has been gathered, it is converted into a coded format that follows an international standard and is then automatically transmitted to pilots. It is also made available to anyone else who needs it. This coded message is called a Terminal Aerodrome Forecast, or TAF. Anyone trained in reading TAFs will easily be able to decipher the wind, visibility, cloud coverage and other general weather data for that airport. Risk of having severe wind shear. I know On St Helena, the forecaster will sometimes meet with the pilots to discuss the accuracy of forecasts. This is also very helpful in the process of building knowledge for future operations. Becoming an aviation forecaster takes a number of years of study and training. Some of the uh, most important attitudes and skills that you will need as a weather forecaster is uh, analytical problem-solving uh, attitude and some uh, scientific and uh, understanding, physics, maths, all these uh, uh, numerical skills and sciences can be very useful. But on the other hand side, you also have to you are trying to communicate the science and the, your forecast to customers, to people, to pilots. And so having communication skills, public speaking skills and um, confidence in uh, speaking in public can be a very useful attitude. The role of the weather forecaster is a consultancy role, mostly. So being able to collaborate well with uh, your colleagues and with your customer is, uh, is uh, paramount. To become an aviation forecaster, uh, some of the subjects that will be uh, useful or uh, required will be subjects like uh, physics, maths, geography, uh, engineering and all environmental science. So any kind of scientific numerical subject will be give you a good base where to start from. Generally speaking, uh, they will be looking for uh, somebody that's done a bachelor in uh, a university in one of these subjects. But uh, also you will be, a lot of the knowledge and training you will receive uh, uh, in-house. If you have uh, a relevant degree that can be used in aviation forecasting, I, like I did physics for example, after that, I applied to the Met Office in the UK and uh, I enrolled in a, a, year, a year and a half uh, a training program. This uh, was based in Exeter in the southwest of the UK and uh, the first uh, six to eight months it was uh, very much class-based um, learning. You will be in a class uh, having, receiving lessons and uh, uh, practicing a uh, new theory about or new uh, uh, learning the science behind meteorology, learning what tools as a, an aviation forecaster you have access to and what the strength and limitations of this are and just practicing that uh, theoretical knowledge in a class. But then it comes also a, a vocational side of another six or seven months of vocational training where I will be based in one of the airports that the Met Office works with and uh, I will be shadowing or being shadowed by a qualified meteorologist as I try to do the job on the job and then once I manage to gain those skills and that experience I will be assessed and eventually uh, qualify myself. Once a forecaster has finished their training they are then assigned placements at various airfields to gain experience of forecasting and aviation operations. 
after you've done your training in Exeter for your vocational training, you will be posted to one of the uh, airports where the Met Office works. It's a com you can give some preferences, but it tends to be where there is uh, space and need. And uh, you will spend uh, those six, seven months. There will be some help for you to uh, move uh, from Exeter to uh, the new airport location for the first few weeks. And uh, from there, once you're qualified, you might. I, some of my colleagues stayed in the same airport where they trained. I moved to a different airport that I, where I put a preference to. Depends a lot on where there is lack of personnel, where there is the need, and. Uh, you can, they will try to accommodate the preferences as much as business allows. The training and qualifications that you get from the Met Office are recognized internationally, either by the World Meteorological Organization or by the International Aviation uh, Committees that uh, um, overlook aviation across the globe. So, yes, you are trained within the Met Office, but those same qualifications can be transported into other airports, other organizations, either nationally or internationally. It's going back out on Wednesday, but... Becoming an aviation forecaster is a challenging yet rewarding job. Salaries in the UK start at £31,000 per year for newly qualified meteorologists, rising to packages of around £53,000 for an experienced senior meteorologist. The aviation forecaster is an important role at the airport and one that gives forecasters the skills to take with them wherever they may go in the world. I think somebody should become an aviation forecaster if they have any kind of interest in the subject. I found that I found the topic very interesting and even uh, being paid to do something that uh, you, you are curious about uh, can be very rewarding. Plus, it's a very scientific uh, role but also very like people centered role. You're trying to communicate the science and the uh, forecast to people across their uh, daily lives so or the uh, daily jobs. So it's, uh, you've got a lot of variety that comes with aviation forecasting. Further information about weather forecasting can be found on the UK Met Office website at www.metoffice.com gov.uk. They offer a one-week work experience programme for 14 to 17 year olds that will give those thinking about a career in weather forecasting a taster of what to expect. Summer placements are also available in the UK. Additional information can also be obtained from St Helena Airport Limited by contacting us at info at St Helena Airport .aero or calling us on 25180. We'd be more than happy to show you around the airport to give you a first-hand experience of what's involved in aviation forecasting.